Uh, I think we are on. Yeah, sorry, I didn't see that uh, we had actually gotten on. Uh, you, you press the button to start, and then it takes a minute or so. But this is David Rovix, and this is broadcast number two of the seven-part series that I'm doing on history in song. And uh, and actually, I was going to start with 1950 and go up to 1996, but we'll see how far I get. And this is just a broadcast of original songs on subjects related to those years. And actually, I thought I would change things around a little bit and start with... Uh, 1948, because um, I, I don't know, I was starting with 1950 because of a song from that period, uh, but then, then I realized uh, 1948 was a, a year I've written about a fair amount, and here is um, uh, a little song from my album Songs for Mahmoud about the Nakba. <laughs> Refugee, and I don't know if I'll ever see the old farmhouse I've heard about, but it's where I belong, there is no doubt, cause my whole family is from that farm, we never did, nobody harm, and if you're confused by what you heard, let me boil it down. A single word, I want to go home. I want to go home. I have heard my grandpa say that on the street, most every day, the neighbor's kids would kick a ball with my dad when he was small. We were Christians, they were Jews, but it was no big deal. Religious views, so it was strange when at the point of a gun across the river we had to run. I want to go home. songs and we all knew where we belonged we grew crops life was good there in the land where Jesus stood now we're scattered everywhere but there's no peace anywhere and I'm just searching for some kind of sign for some way back I want to go home 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 Actually, that's uh, from uh, uh, the album for the moment, and um, about the uh, formation of the state of Israel and what the Palestinians called the Nakba, the uh, beginning of the process of what's become 
reality there of uh, displacement of the indigenous population onto refugee camps and settlements and everything else. And um, moving up to 1950, um, here is uh, a song about one of the most uh, notable events in the world of that year, especially if you're in Asia. Fifty years ago today, we stood in the rubble. The sun rose each morning through the smoke. The planes flew above us looking for something left to burn. Our factories, our schools, lied ravaged and broke. Now you wonder why there is this anger. As we remember all too clearly a time that we once knew in every home, in every dam, and so many, many people were flattened to the ground by the things you had to do when Korea was just another name for bombs falling from the sky and home was just another word for this place where people die Fifty years ago today, you killed my mother I've lived my whole life and never knew The love she might have given, the joy she might have felt To sit in the garden where her grandchildren grew And now you wonder why we might feel attacked You wonder at the stand our leaders take But it was you I remember who gave us this lesson of the sound of a city when it breaks when Korea was just another name for bombs falling from the sky and home was just another word for this place where people die Fifty years ago today, you killed my father He was shooting at your planes when he died Just one of how many million dead soldiers Fighting and falling side by side Now you wonder at what you call an evil axis You throw words that someday will explode We remember the last time you said these things when crater was another word for road When Korea was just another name For bombs falling from the sky And home was just another word For this place where people die Ago today, we stood in rubble. Of course, it's early November right now, and um, at the beginning of, uh, well, uh, uh, just a few days ago in 1962, October 27th, 1962, uh, the world nearly ended, or at least large parts of it, certainly in, in the U.S. and Europe. Um, and uh, it was uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and uh, if uh, if not for one uh, Soviet Navy uh, commander uh, named Vasily Arkhipov, uh, certainly hundreds of millions of us would not be here today or wouldn't ever have been born. The Beach Boys were playing on the radio the Beatles were singing Love Me Do Lolita was playing in the cinemas It was October 1962 Kent Kesey published One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest John Glenn orbited the Earth Australia had just won the most gold medals At the Commonwealth Games in Perth the boomers were just getting into high school Dylan first sang blowing in the wind The U.S. Army had just started their war against the Viet Minh 
on the day Vasily saved the world If I had a hammer was in the billboard chairs An Air Force jet crashed into the sea The first black student had been admitted To Ole Miss University Hewlett Packard sold a personal computer But it wouldn't really take off for a while Jackie had just come back from a trip to India Plunging necklines were the latest summer style Algeria had just won her independence Korea was rebuilding from the war The Russian River had just flooded A couple of weeks before On the day Vasily saved the world The CIA was running Operation Mongoose, killing Cubans in their factories and streets. The U.S. was gearing up for an invasion, still smarting from the Bay of Pigs defeat. The Soviets had sent missiles to Havana to protect themselves and their Cuban friends. The U.S. Navy blockaded Cuba's harbors, and there was no telling how this thing would end. Khrushchev got on TV to make it very clear Cuba was a sovereign state And if our ships are attacked We will retaliate On the day Vasily saved the world Vice Admiral Vasily Arkhipov was standing at his post on a Soviet Navy submarine. They were on patrol in international waters. One actor in a terrifying scene. They were out of radio contact deep beneath the water when the sub began to shake and crack. The captain said, arm the nuclear torpedoes. We're under attack The Americans were bombing them But in order to respond Three officers had to give the go Two were in agreement But for some reason The Vice Admiral said no On the day Vasily saved the world On the day Vasily saved the world And then on the other side of the Atlantic Far into the interior of uh, North America is uh, the Appalachian Mountains, where in uh, my friend Chris Irwin in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, sent me a newspaper article about a um, incident that happened nearby where he lives uh, in 1968, uh, when an unknown person uh, snuck on to a big mining operation and and did uh, $800,000 worth of damage to equipment. And, um, and uh, you know, Chris and I were speculating about um, who might have done that, and of course it's just speculation because he or she was never caught, but we kind of came up with a personality profile, and I wrote this song.
better by my grew up on this mountain It's in my very soul So when the company moved next door Started digging for the coal Tearing up the mountain With drillers and drag lines I knew then what needed To happen to those mines Ten, nine, eight Sometimes that's just how it goes Three, two, one Get out before it blows the ground stayed well out of sight I tied sticks to the equipment set the timer on and I knew that in ten seconds those dozers would be gone ten, nine, eight sometimes that's just how it goes three, two, one get out before it And then in 1968, maybe uh, somebody, that person uh, knew was uh, involved with uh, one, or, one of the many events related to uh, this song about uh, the My Lai Massacre in Vietnam and a helicopter pilot named Hugh Thompson, who I met once uh, briefly at a Vets for Peace conference in Philadelphia a uh, long time ago before he died at a very young age. Hugh Thompson was a pilot just like many more Fighting for old glory on a far-off foreign shore He was on a lethal mission, only one of many Following his orders to kill the enemy To kill the enemy He flew low above the village, searching for the foe When he saw a wounded child on the path below he thought this to be a sure sign that the enemy was near So he radioed for backup and more choppers did appear More choppers did appear Help the wounded, he cried out, and beware of an attack and then the child died by a bullet through her back And when he looked around for the culprits of the scene It was a company of men in U.S. military green U.S. military green 
The dead were in the hundreds, strewn all around in this place called Me Lai, which once had been a town. There was a huddle, huddled children, soldiers had them in their sights. You decided at that moment to fight for what was right. To fight for what was right. Weapons on the GIs and his copter crews obeyed and stood among the children, tattered and afraid. The whole town had been murdered, but for some kids and widowed wives, and Hugh Thompson made sure that those remaining would survive. That those remaining would survive. It was a 15 minute standoff in a knee deep sea of red Amidst the moaning of the dying and the silence of the dead Hugh Thompson was a soldier and he served his country well On the day he saved the lives of a dozen kids in hell Of a dozen kids in hell And, of course, um, while the U.S. Uh, was uh, committing genocidal acts in Vietnam and elsewhere in Southeast Asia, uh, the uh, uh, CIA was busily uh, involving itself with uh, Chilean politics and uh, orchestrating an overthrow of the democratically elected socialist government of Salvador Allende and the uh, despotic uh, Regime, U.S. backed uh, dictatorship uh, led by uh, Pinochet that followed. As I looked out my window at the clear blue sky, at the planes that flew so low, at the smoke that rose so high, the air filled up with dust. That blackened out the sun And the politicians went on About the new day that had begun And when I looked at my calendar I knew it would be so It was on this day In Santiago Less than 30 years had passed And how clearly I remember what the city had been like before that day in September There were doctors on the sidewalks helping those in need Students in the barrios teaching children how to read There were milk trucks in the shanties driving to and fro On this day in Santiago I could tell you about the rallies, the whole city in the street. The president was speaking and we all were on our feet. Allende was the future, destitution was the past. The city was in motion and things were changing fast. Just how fast they were changing, only Kissinger could know. On this day in Santiago. Anaconda copper and Nixon got their dream A country torn apart, ruptured at the seam A fascist coup was what they wanted And that's just what they'd get When they sent down from Fort Benning General Pinochet Lady Liberty hung her head down low On this day In Santiago they dropped bombs on La Moneda with jet planes from D.C. They killed 5,000 people in our city by the sea. A reign of terror started when they cut off victors' hands. The rivers clogged with bodies and our blood drenched the sands. And I remember wondering which way future winds might blow on this day 
en Santiago. Of course, one of the many uh, bizarre little facts of history was the uh, bombing of the presidential palace in Santiago uh, happened on September 11th, 1973. And uh, so um, that was the date that uh, many people uh, on the left and around the world uh, associated with September 11th, although my association with September 11th was uh, more the uh, shutdown of the... Uh, of those uh, elitist economic meetings in Melbourne, Australia, which happened on September 11th, 2000. But, um, yeah, and um, it's for song for Hugh Thompson, I seem to always be sucking on cough drops back then, which was terribly detrimental to my teeth, but uh, also gave, my, uh, g it gave me a kind of a weird accent uh, that was uh, cough drop induced from having the cough drop in, in my cheek all the time playing in the subways back then in the 90s all the time uh, it was bad for my lungs it was a good thing to stop doing um, anyway on a lighter note than uh, overthrow of democratic governments or massacres um, here's a song about, that about uh, 1974 is the year that this song is most uh, associated with perhaps when the building of the biggest windmill in the world began in western Denmark and the Danish plans to build a nuclear reactor were scuttled uh, partially as a result and uh, largely as a result perhaps and um, and it's a, a it changed the history of the world actually it was in the 1970s the fuel crisis had begun the choices were presented to us as if we had none. Leaders of industry said they could solve the problem by mastering the power of the radioactive atom. Some folks in western Jutland got a notion in their heads. They thought there might be something they could offer up instead. A few hundred people gathered in a little place called Twind and declared their will to harness the power of the wind. They said, we're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill. There were many who said their science wasn't sound, that such a mighty windmill would simply topple to the ground. Some of them were scientists, the vast majority were not, but they knew with years of effort you could do a lot. Word about the project spread far and wide. A hundred thousand visitors came to help and to advise Until one day these windmill builders Drove in with a crane And lifted up their giant wings With a mighty chain We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. When Twindcraft was completed, it reached up to the sky. Its wings churned in the air at 54 meters high. The critics all fell silent. No one now was jeering as even industry agreed. This was some damn fine engineering The wind regaled Jutland from the North Atlantic Sea As it was seamlessly converted into electricity 
It was power for the people, leukemia for none. When they declared in Denmark, just south of the midnight sun. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. We're gonna build the biggest windmill in the world. They gave away the patents. They said knowledge should be free, and their plans were copied by a newborn industry. Soon Denmark would be known. Uh, it looks like uh, I don't know what had you, what just happened there. I thought I had the whole song on there, but uh, oh well, I thought I had fixed that, but apparently I hadn't. So there was an abrupt ending to this song. Um, but uh, well, probably got the picture, and I'll fix that for future broadcasts. But I think I said that last time. Apparently didn't. But um. Uh, moving right along, uh, here's um, a, a song about the uh, profound uh, phenomenon uh, known as urban decay, uh, or as uh, the post-industrial period that began around that same period when the Danes were building the biggest windmill. Uh, everything was going to shit in uh, the United States uh, for the most part, and uh, this is a song about that from the perspective of more or less somewhere in one of the post-industrial cities of Connecticut where I grew up. I was young once, it was a long time ago. Things were different than I thought you should know. This old building was once a factory We made Stetsons, your grandpa and me It wasn't easy, but at least life was going down There used to be a city in this town Rusted rail yard had a hotel and a couple of stores. We had good times here between the wars. It wasn't paradise, but there was music in the street. Right there's where your grandparents first had a chance to meet. They got married in that church. I can still see her wedding gown. There used to be a city in this town. When the change came, it started one by one. First the layoffs, then the factory was gone. Then came the highways, suburbs, and Walmart. That was the final blow that tore this place apart. But it seems like just last year, when there were people all around, there used to be a city in this town. Census says there's people here, but I think someone's confused. Just look out at these sidewalks, they're not being used. You know when a city dies, it doesn't die with grace. It just becomes a ruin, shouting this was once the place. I guess it's time to leave, but I don't know where I'd be bound. There used to be a city in this town. to be a city in this town there used to be a city in this town 
used to be a city in this town. And uh, yeah, that's from Songs from Mahmoud. I, I love that studio, Sugar Hill in uh, Houston, where I recorded that. Um, and uh, so, uh, of course, right around that same time uh, in the 1970s was uh, was was a high point of the campaign of terror against uh, the people of Cuba carried out by right wing activists with uh, carte blanche to do whatever they wanted to do. And uh, 1976 uh, was a notable year when a Cuban airliner was. Uh, was uh, sh blown up in in air, in the air, killing uh, s scores of people, uh, and uh, that that was only one of many many uh, deadly acts of terror carried out by Luis Luis Posada Calles, who is a free man today uh, in uh, Miami, unlike uh, those Cubans who are trying to prevent acts of terrorism being committed by people in Florida and elsewhere. Uh, uh, who are in prison uh, currently in the U.S., the Cuban 5, Cuban 4, now. Luis Posada lived in Havana, there amongst the gentry. With the doctors and lawyers and mafia bosses, he thought it was his country. When the revolution came, he left, just 90 miles away. Then he signed up for a course at the SOA. Luis Posada left Fort Benning, a lieutenant working for the CIA, a long career of death and murder began on that day. He planted bombs in Cuban cafes to strike fear within the hearts of the Cuban people, and he directed every part, and now he is a free man in Miami. Luis Posada hired hitmen to plant bombs inside a plane. Seventy-three people died in a blood-red rain. He ran guns and drugs for the Contras, and there he trained a terror cell to wreak havoc on their homeland and, of course, to kill Fidel. And now he is a free man in Miami. Luis Posada went to prison. He was caught with 30 pounds of C4 explosives. He was going to bring a building down. He could have killed 2,000 that night in Panama. But Bush said, hand him over. We want him in Florida. And now he is a free man in Miami. Luis Posada is a free man, not so the Cuban Five, who agreed to leave their homeland to allow it to survive, Undercover in South Florida, they were the eyes and ears. For fighting terrorism, they're serving 20 years. While Posada is a free man in Miami. In 1974, right around that same period that that was going on, uh, was uh, the beginning of the efforts by the U.S. government and Peabody Coal Company uh, and other authorities to uh, move thousands of people off of uh, their reservation in the Black Mesa area of Arizona and Big Mountain on uh, the Navajo, or what was uh, the Navajo Nation. And um, now it's been annexed by Hopi, uh, the Hopis and uh, various uh, political machinations going on there. But um, 1974 was when they uh, started their efforts to move thousands of people off of their traditional land and onto into trailers in another part of the res that's uh, currently and since the late 70s uh, poisoned by a uranium tailing spill where the sheep all die when they drink the water and uh, I was there for a couple weeks uh, 13 or years ago and uh, wrote this song for Big Mountain. live with this earth the land is the people and the people are the land and this is the land of our birth but now you want to move us off this mesa as if you can take a body from a soul you want to take from us our paradise on earth and trade it for a mountain of coal what if they were coming for your grandma what if they were coming for your child? 
What if they were tearing up the ground beneath your feet, even taking the rivers that were once running wild? What would you do if they were coming for you? liver of our mother and it must remain in the ground the trees are her lungs and the rivers are her blood and they should all be left as they were found but now you slurry coal across these pastures and your trees all go to feed your hungry mill you would have us live in rows of shacks without our sheep on your church rock uranium spill what if they were coming for your grandma? What if they were coming for your child? What if they were tearing up the ground beneath your feet, even taking the rivers that were once running wild? What would you do if they were coming for you? down a whole gone store we will say to anyone who listen relocation nevermore so won't you come to big mountain bring everything you can but come today this is the land where we belong and this is the land where we will stay what if they were coming for your grandma what if they were coming for your child? What if they were tearing up the ground beneath your feet, even taking the rivers that were once running wild? What would you do if they were coming for you? What would you do if they were coming for you? What would you do if they were coming for you? Then within a few years of that, in the 70s in Nicaragua and the 80s in El Salvador was uh, civil wars fueled by the U.S., um, armed by the U.S., and um, during the November offensive uh, in uh, uh, the FMLN uh, and uh, seeing this picture on the cover of the New York Times um, inspired this song. said where you came from did you grow up in the country did your father spend his days with a basket on his back on someone's farm picking coffee when he came home from the fields did he throw you on his shoulders and take you on a pony ride when you went to bed with no food in your belly did he hold you when How many of your siblings gave into the hunger that the healers couldn't see? How many bodies did you pull out from the river? For how many did you dig their grave? When did you decide to leave the village? Was it just something that you knew? Was it just something that you knew? 
it just time for you to go? Or did you know exactly what you set out to do? Every song I've ever written's been a love song. This is just another song for the love of an unknown soldier. Spend years in the jungle fighting for your freedom, fighting for your people's liberation. Did you watch your compañeros die around you while you held fast to your vocation? Did you make rocket launchers in your rebel hideouts like your mother made pupusas? Did you dream the dreams of La Paz y Anaya or those of Poncho? Every song I've ever written's been a love song. This is just another song for the love of an unknown soldier. I saw you on a rooftop in the city, in a photo on the cover of the Times. Long black hair flowing down, a machine gun in your hand, in your face was freedom's ringing chimes. Looking at your picture, one of a thousand killed that day. In a moment, I could feel that my heart grew, and in all the trials of my life, you know, I can only hope to be as beautiful as you. Every song I've ever written's been a love song. This is just another song for the love of an unknown soldier. And uh, then here's another song about a rebel on another side of the Atlantic in Ireland. He grew up on a farm in a troubled Irish land Under foreign rule and the British crown's command His father fought for Ireland Fifty years before But the free state cut their losses And the English won the war When internment without trial Was the order of the day When his brother was arrested And his friends were blown away When he was beaten near to death He decided come what may He'd throw his lot in with the provost And he joined the IRA In the occupied six counties, perhaps it never will be known. All the foreign soldiers in Armand Tyrone, who decided to head back 
across the Irish Sea so they wouldn't have to meet the man from south of Derry. He never wavered in his battle for Irish liberty and the crown would soon regret the day they called him enemy. The Brits called it bandit country and it filled them all with fright in the borderlands he who walked the hills at night. Up the provost, that's what he said Three little words that filled the British crown with dread With a rifle on his shoulder, a timer and a few Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes Once he was surrounded by the SAS How he might escape Was anybody's guess In his boots and camouflage He didn't miss a beat He walked right past the soldiers And out into the street Once he came upon a checkpoint The soldier didn't want to die He recognized our Francis And the soldier waved him by He didn't want to find out If he could take what he could give he knew there'd be a shootout And the soldier chose to live Up the provost That's what he said And from this farmer's son Better man had fled With a rifle on his shoulder A timer and a fuse Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes. the North's most wanted man with his photo everywhere but he eluded capture with his wit and dyed blonde hair. For six years he was active, three times as long as most he became a legend north to south and coast to coast he came upon two soldiers out one night on patrol they caught him in the firefight and the bullets took their toll Crawled off into the bushes, but they found him the next day. Grabbed him by his arms, and they carried him away. Up the provost, that's what he said. With a shattered bone and a body full of lead. With a rifle on his shoulder, a timer and a few. Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes. Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes. They beat him and they tortured him and they gave him 80 years. When they brought him to the H blocks, he was greeted there with cheers. He went right onto the blanket and when the hunger strike began, he was the first to volunteer. Along with Bobby Sands He was an Irish soldier That's how he did his time He knew he was no criminal Occupation was the crime Bobby Sands had passed beyond us Where Francis soon would be And although he couldn't stand And he could barely see Up the provost That's what he said as they carried him to hospital to lay in his deathbed With a rifle on his shoulder, a timer and a few Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes Up the provost, that's what he said And soon there'd be another standing in his stead With a rifle on his shoulder, a timer and a few 
Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes. Long may we remember Commandante Francis Hughes. And then in the 1980s, while that stuff was going on in Ireland, um, the autonomous movement was happening in Germany and Denmark and other countries in continental Europe. And um, they uh, were and are, but especially were, a, a very impressive uh, movement in, in many ways that had many different pursuits, uh, uh, you know, including uh, changing how people lived and looking at, at, at society and, and lifestyle and things like that, as well as, of course, uh, more traditional left-wing uh, concerns like American imperialism and uh, German uh, it, it, German empire building in, in economic ways and various other things uh, that they were involved with but um, one of the one of the things that you will learn uh, it's still today and certainly from the, the 1980s if you go to Germany is that on the left on the in the especially in, in the autonomous scene and the anarchist scene um, men sit down to pee and if they don't then they get in trouble and I thought that's a great idea and uh, makes a heck of a lot of sense and um, and I wrote a song about it. In bathrooms, actually, all over Germany, in any leftist household, you will see um, if you're facing the toilets, where you where you see if you're standing in front of the toilet, you see a picture of a guy uh, peeing, standing up with pee splattering all over the place, and an X through it, and a picture of a guy sitting down, and a big circle around it. <laughs> We'd have at least one enthusiastic promoter of this <laughs> of this policy. world's full of problems. Some are big and some are small. A war, greed, pollution might take some time to solve them all. But if a long march starts with just one step, there's one I'd like to mention. If you live with your nostrils open, perhaps it's come to your attention. You may be fighting for freedom all the night and day. But when you come back home, someone's bound to say You want to change the world, man, believe me, I do too But in the meantime, it's re required that we live in a zoo Cause the revolution starts at home, let me tell you this Stand up for your rights, boys, but sit down to piss Well, if you've ever lived with other people, you may know what I mean Who's gonna wash the dishes and get the bathtub clean? As we scrub the tear gas from our eyes, the issue may seem so little, but what might make or break the movement is exactly how you piddle. Cause the revolution starts at home, let me tell you this. Stand up for your rights, boys, but sit down to piss. Well, if you just love to clean the toilet, I say that is really neat. But you could still save yourself some effort by pulling up a seat. However, if you think your aim is true and you don't have to sit, all I've got to say, son, is you are full of shit. Cause the revolution starts at home, let me tell you this. Stand up for your rights, boys, but sit down to piss. Well, I don't want to cramp your style or keep you from doing your thing. In your own apartment, you can surely be the king. But if you're inside sharing space, I hope by now you see that the respectful thing to do is to sit down when you pee. Because the revolution starts at home, let me tell you this. Stand up for your rights, boys, but sit down to piss. The revolution starts at home, let me tell you this. Stand up for your rights, boys, but sit down to piss. And that was live at Club Basim in 2000, just before the IMF World Bank protests uh, in D.C. And uh, Ali Rosenblatt singing along with me there so capably. Um, and uh, then, uh, then let's see, when was it? Um, uh, in 19... 
91, we're just skipping around a little bit, but uh, basically in, in, in 1986, I believe, is when uh, uh, Mordechai Venunu got out of uh, Israel and started talking about the uh, secret stockpile of nuclear weapons that Israel was developing with his help and others. Um, and he figured out what was going on and, and blew the whistle on it And um, in the late 80s and then was kidnapped off the streets of Rome by Mossad and imprisoned in, in, for 18 years, mostly in solitary. And he's still now, he's, he's not in prison, but he's not allowed to leave Israel, and uh, there are many other restrictions on him. And um, so here's a song related to the topic here in terms of the late 1980s. Uh, uh, this is Vanunu. I was born in Marrakesh And I thought life was good Then some visitors came from far away Convinced us that we should Move from Marrakesh to Israel What they called the promised land That's how we ended up in Beersheba By the Negev desert sand I turned 18 and joined the army That's what everybody did I learned to blow up bridges Just like every other kid I learned to fire weapons I learned how to shoot to kill Then I studied engineering and learned many other skills. I got a job, paid the rent, working just like you. I just did what I had to do. As the years went by, I learned many things, and I wondered what to do. With the bird knowledge brings I learned about the massacres Committed in my name After Sabra and Shatila Life could never be the same But I got up every morning Worked till the day was through And I did What I had To do Working in the desert what I was told, though I'd long ago rejected the bill of goods I had been sold. I was supposed to ask no questions, but as the years passed by, I discovered what was going on there beneath the clear blue sky. I snuck a camera into work one day as my suspicions grew, and I did what I had to do. Once I left the country, I could no longer sit on the fence. I met with a reporter and displayed the evidence of the secret nuclear arsenal, which I had helped to make. I had to blow the whistle for humanity's sake. The world simply had to find out the things my commanders knew. So I did what I had to do. Mossad came to get me on the streets of Rome Brought me in a boat back to my adopted home After 18 years of torture in a tiny prison cell On the streets some people ask me how I lived so long in hell Each morning when I woke up I remembered it was true That I did what I had I did what I had to do. And that's June Bustamante and and Alejandro Arenas, uh, very capably doing all that musical accompaniment there in Florida with the tracks that I sent them from Portland. And um, that is on the uh, uh, album Everything Can Change, which you can download for free at Bandcamp, davidrovics.bandcamp.com. And um, 
uh, it's also going to be on the CD that I'm working on, which is going to be out in the next several weeks, hopefully. Um, a physical CD, which is going to be a compilation of songs from the past three albums. And um, speaking of the past three albums, moving on to 1980s, uh, well, really it was the late 60s through the 1980s, uh, uh, but um, there, there was... A, there was in Boston and many other places all over the world, a struggle against the building of the massive highways that, that were coming through all over the place since the 1950s, uh, depending on the country in the U.S., since the 50s. You know. um, and um, the anti-highway movement, although people visiting the U.S. might not think it because there's so many highways, uh, but the anti-highway movement actually had a lot of successes. And uh, one of those very notable successes was the saving of the neighborhood of Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts, uh, part of the Boston uh, area, in the southern part of Boston, uh, saving it from turning into a highway that would have divided it in half and, and destroyed it in so many ways. But instead, uh, because of uh, a popular movement and lots of arrests and, and uh, everything else, um, Jamaica Plain was saved, and uh, it is now a thriving multicultural neighborhood, which, uh, I, ironically, I guess, I don't know if it's ironic, but interestingly, I suppose, it started becoming a uh, more multicultural neighborhood when it was threatened with destruction because the housing costs and uh, the, the, uh, the price of buying a house went way down because the houses were basically going to get destroyed. So... Um, a lot of people from all over the world were able to move in there and form a wonderful community and then uh, the community through their efforts and the efforts of the anti-highway movement generally um, the community won and um, and uh, and it was saved and now the housing prices are a lot higher uh, good for some but not for others and it's uh, you know still all the problems with capitalism and there's more gentrification happening in that neighborhood now and but anyway, this is a song about the uh, initial saving of that neighborhood and uh, the highway that became a train line. In the 60s, they were building lots of single-family homes. The suburbs were the place to have your child, dog, and cat. Businessmen and housewives each had a swimming pool, prescription drugs, a big car, and a generic welcome mat. All the suburbs needed highways, they were being built in every state from the east coast to the west. But when in Boston, Massachusetts, they came to build a highway at GM and DOT's behest, in front of their bulldozers, there in Jamaica Plain, from all around, people came and stood. They asked, should we have commuters or community, a highway or a neighborhood? The governor said, we hear you, but you just don't understand. It's the way things are, the order of the day. Is that progress must go on, the economy must grow, and this state needs another highway. A whole bunch of people protested, a whole bunch were arrested. The cops figured that was that. But folks kept coming back Where the backhoes were supposed to dig That's just where people sat They asked, would you have a fast lane here With big trucks spewing diesel Or keep your homes of wood Would you have commuters or community A highway or a neighborhood It was the anti-highway movement who said the national is local.
and the people of JP. Against all those in power, the biggest business interests, federal as well as state authority. But Perseverance won, and the highway was abandoned. The neighborhood remained. Instead, they built a subway line, a long, thin park, playgrounds, and bicycle lanes. The people had spoken. The question had been answered, as one would think it should. Should we have commuters or community, a highway or a neighborhood? Should we have commuters or community, a highway or a neighborhood? And Spontaneous Celebrations is a wonderful organization that. It was part of the coming out of that movement, and they put on a couple of wonderful festivals every year in Jamaica Plain in May and in the fall, the Lantern Parade in the fall, and Wake Up the Earth in May. My sister Bonnie is very involved with that, as well as many other wonderful folks in that area, Femke Rosenbaum. And so, um, and that song was from uh, Into a Prism, another album you can download or stream for free on Bandcamp. And uh, here is a song for, uh, related to that time period of the uh, 70s, 80s, uh, early 90s, um, during all the all the civil wars and, and uh, dirty wars in Latin America, uh, fueled by the Panama-based uh, institute, the School of the Americas. Uh, it, it was uh, forced through, very, uh, through the pressure of the mothers of the disappeared there to move, and it moved to Columbus, Georgia, where there have since uh, the early 90s uh, been regular uh, annual and, and, and other uh, protests against the School of the Americas, the School of the Assassins, based there in Columbus, Georgia, and um, I won't be there this year, but uh, the, the protests are going to be, uh, again, uh, the uh, annual protests uh, happen on the anniversary of the killing of uh, of uh, six priests and uh, and uh a maid and the maid's uh, child uh, by the death squads trained in the School of the Americas um, and um, so the uh, uh, th let's see that's uh, actually what is it this it's next weekend uh, next next weekend is when when the um, right that or maybe it's the weekend after that anyway go to S A S O A SOAW.org, and uh, if you want to, if you want to go to those protests in Georgia, which I highly recommend, for all sorts of reasons, wonderful people. Here's um, a song for the SOA that I wrote, uh, maybe a couple years after I first started uh, attending and singing at the SOA protests. You can load us in your buses and behind your prison doors. When you think you've silenced us There will be 5,000 more We are gathered here today To put our bodies in harm's way At this school of death and shame No more murder in our name You dare to call them freedom fighters Call the butchers what you will But from Hara to Allende It is freedom that you kill We are gathered here today Put our bodies in harm's way At the school of death and shame No more murder in our Georgia will be always in your sight With so much blood upon your hands How do you butcher sleep at night? We are gathered here today 
put our bodies in harm's way at the school of death and shame. No more murder in our name. from town to town Every day a new voice sounded Shut the school of torture down We are gathered here today Put our bodies in harm's way At the school of death and shame No more murder in our name We are gathered here today Put our bodies in harm's way At the school of death and shame No more murder in our name And that's uh, live at Club Passim in uh, Boston and Cambridge, Massachusetts in 2000. And um, right around uh, right around that time, before you know, in the in the 90s, uh, when the SOA protests started, uh, of course, there was also the uh, sanctions on Iraq, which killed by the admission of the uh, of UNICEF as well as even the U.S. State Department, uh, killed half a million children. Although Madeleine Albright, uh, Secretary of State at the time, uh, famously said the price was worth it. And uh, a group called uh, uh, Voices in the Wilderness, uh, led by Kathy Kelly and other wonderful people in Chicago and elsewhere, uh, started uh, organizing and protesting against the U.S.-led U.N. sanctions against Iraq, against the people of Iraq, really. And um, and during uh, during that time, uh, uh, well, one of the things they uh they did that that was really effective that i remember hearing about was um when at first they were standing in chicago in different places with a big banner saying end the sanctions on iraq uh and they would get a lot of uh people jeering and and stuff and then they uh started having a banner that just had a picture of a of a little girl from iraq and it said is she your enemy and then they stopped getting any Harassment, and uh, and I wrote this song about that girl. She was picking yellow flowers, smiling at the sunlight, weaving stems to make a necklace, working hard to get it all. She reached out to trade it For the bread her mama brought her And when I looked into her eyes I saw my daughter Her feet were bare as mine were When I grew up in the country just like her, I watched my mother Hanging out the laundry Now she's grabbed some clothes and darted off And her mama chased and caught her And when I looked into her eyes I saw my Just rising up behind her She hides 
beneath the rubble Where nobody can find her And when she tires and walks back home Mama tells her that she loves her And when I looked into her eyes I saw my daughter no more bread to give her The cement floor is cold tonight And beneath the rags she shivers And as the jet planes scorch the sky She's longing for her brother As the bombs fall in the distance she the next one fall much closer It's not so far to Baghdad And I could be her father Cause when I looked into her eyes I saw my That's from For the Moment with the great Sean Staples on the mandolin and other uh, musicians, I believe Dave Westner playing on there. Um, and uh, of course, uh, while the U.S. was uh, positioning itself to uh, to become an enemy of Saddam Hussein after they aided him for so many years in his war against Iran, but of course it's all about, uh, you know, the enemy of your enemy and whatever else. And, uh, and and then, of course, uh, since the U.S. Uh, provided the weapons, uh, some of the chemicals necessary for gassing the Kurds, uh, and uh, but then the U.S. is now, of course, later saying the Kurds were victims of, of Iraqi oppression and supporting the Kurds while vilifying the Turkish Kurds because uh, they are fighting a U.S. ally. So it's all very complicated, uh, as has been uh eloquently stated uh, in a movie called Good Kurds, Bad Kurds that I saw, and after seeing that movie, I wrote a song uh, with the same title. Saddam Hussein gassed the Kurdish people Killed thousands in a single day Twelve long years later Uncle Sam said you can't treat Kurds that way And furthermore all Kurds are freedom fighters Who'd resist this Iraqi tyranny So Uncle Sam will give them guns And maybe sometimes ammunition So the brave Kurds can fight until they're free Meanwhile in southeastern Turkey The Turkish army had a unique plan We'll go burn down 3,000 villages Get rid of what they call Kurdistan But some of these pesky Kurds decided That they would rather fight instead of die So Uncle Sam said You are terrorists because Turkey is our ally yes, Geopolitics is confusing in fact, it can be quite absurd 
Especially if you value your freedom You live in Turkey and you are a Kurd Yes, when Iraqi Kurds are massacred We say this is genocide Okay, we armed the army through the 80s But now we proudly take the Kurdish side But in Turkey it's an internal matter And for us to get involved would be wrong So we'll sell some tanks and copters to Ankara And hope these poor folks can get along Yes, geopolitics is confusing And you can't take the Yankees at their word at least that's distinctly how it looks If you live in Turkey and you are a Kurd Yes, when we talk about American interests And it somehow seems that they're not yours Going all over the world Bombing countries and starting up wars You'd better leave it to the experts Go on back to your playstations Cause our foreign policy only makes sense to see CEOs of multinational corporations Yes, geopolitics is confusing And if you feel like you're not being heard Just imagine how much worse it could be If you lived in Turkey and you were a Kurd And, um, of course, uh, many things happen in the world, and, and those uh, sh sanctions that were on in Iraq and all that was happening in the 90s, uh, among other things, uh, what was happening in in the U.S. was uh, a lot of, uh, well, in, in one particular neighborhood, a lot of gang warfare, a lot of poverty, a lot of racism, and one of the many victims of that uh, that phenomenon was my good friend Eric Mark uh, who was uh, killed in 1993 every time I see that street I think of you and I think of the mornings and your long red hair you're rolling out of bed though you'd rather stay right there but your housemates are up there's so much to do Every time I see that street I think of you And I think of the afternoons Lost together in thought Our long walks in the park All the answers we sought With a mind and a heart Of the wondrous few And every time I see that street I think of you I think of the evenings All the stories you told Out driving your cab Barely twenty years old But with such ancient eyes Oh, the wisdom you knew And every time I see that street I think of you And I remember that night The tequila we drank Laughing for hours With the world to think And you told me you loved me And I said, Eric, I love you too And every time I see that street I think of you was gone San Francisco at night and the warm summer breeze oh, 
walking back alleys Just as free as you please And I think of those poor boys Who drove up to say And give us your money And they blew you away With one pull of a trigger Your sweet life was through And every time I see that street I think of you And then in that same year, a few months later after Eric was shot, August 1993, the fishermen and women of the community of Cordova, Alaska, blockade Prince William Sound. I am a fisherman, so were my parents. Here in Cordova, on Prince William Sound, I'm not a tree hugger, but I love the mountains. And hauling in the gill net with the ocean all around Life was good here You could raise a family With a hundred thousand tons of herring Sent out every year 1989 The tanker grounded Nothing has ever been the same around here Senator Steve said not one drop of oil would spill on Alaska's shores and if it happened it would be cleaned up but our beaches were still covered as was the ocean floor for years past each run collapsed it was then we knew for sure the herring weren't coming back Exxon's promises of compensation were about as empty as a used up paper sack. It was August 20th, 1993, when we fishermen decided something must be done. We packed some groceries, we made some banners. We headed out to Valdez Narrows beneath the midnight sun. One hundred vessels took to the water, pushed through a storm, and to the Valdez Sea. We lined up our boats, formed a blockade, and waited for whatever might be. approaching it was a sight to see there in the twilight of the day we saw it turning we all cheered and cried as tanker after tanker after tanker turned away a coast guard gunship from seattle would take three days to get up to the sound we held the line till then then we went back Home to Cordova, to this hallowed oiled ground. I am a fisherman, so were my parents. Here in Cordova, on Prince William Sound. And, um, and then uh, moving a little further up into uh, 1996. Uh, and there was a recent documentary that's uh, come out that's gotten some attention. I haven't seen the whole thing, but um, here's a song about an incident that certainly caught the attention of a lot of people in the New York area in 1996. Flight 801 left Italy 
Got to New York town then Expected to leave New York Go back to Italy again It was a normal evening at First at TWA The flight took off an hour late After a slight delay And it was wheels up There was excitement in the air For some It was the first time they'd ever been up there This time Flight 800 barely lifted off the ground Before it was shot down over Long Island Sound Scores of people saw it And they wondered why That light left the earth and arced into the sky they saw it hit the aircraft saw the craft burst in flame people asked who fired the rocket others asked the same what was to be another flight over the Atlantic Sea was a flight that wouldn't be This time Flight 800 barely lifted off the ground Before it was shot down over Long Island Sound a Navy missile going where it wasn't supposed to go or a terrorist attack we may never know the CIA announced we understood the popular confusion what appeared to be a missile was an optical illusion and for some reason which we cannot explain There are 230 people dead. Dead they will remain. Cause this time Flight 800 barely lifted off the ground before it was shot down. And that's from the album I just recorded recently at Big Red Studio in Corbett. And, um... Oregon uh, on uh, Into a Prism and uh, I guess we haven't done any songs from the thing I just recorded a few days ago Spies Are Reading My Blog but there will be lots of songs from that album when we get around to 2013 because most of them are about that and you can download download that at Bandcamp uh, davidrovics.bandcamp.com and we are now coming to the end of this show. We're at 1996. Um, I'm kind of roughly dividing these shows up into blocks of 20 songs or thereabouts, covering different periods in history, especially more recent history. Um, but also, you know, the last show w was on f stuff before 1950, 1948, and now we're moving into the more modern period that I'm writing about from the first-person perspective for the most part. And um, this is bringing us to the end of the second of seven shows. You can see the rest, hear the rest of them on Spreaker, and they're all archived on SoundCloud. Uh, dot com slash David Rovix, I think it is, and YouTube um, as well. Um, and uh, so, what else? Um, I, I guess you know, if you want to, uh, if you want to. You know, anybody out there who wants to make a donation to help cover the costs of me having a Spreaker account or whatever is most welcome to click the donate button at davidrovics.com. And if you want to uh, be a huge supporter of what I'm doing here in general, you can subscribe to me. And you can read about that at davidrovics.com. You'll get lots of free, cool stuff in the mail. And uh, most impressively, a little laminated card that you can impress all your friends with that gives you backstage access to all my shows. And um, 
I have now made a commercial announcement and can keep my US citizenship for one more day. And um, if anybody is around Portland, uh, hope to see you downtown tomorrow for Veterans Day, Armistice, Armistice Day at the 11th hour of the 11th day, early of the 11th month, when the First World War uh, ended and the slaughter of tens of millions of people ended briefly before the Second World War started. And um, then I'll be going to Oklahoma, Texas, and Florida over the next uh, next on Wednesday. I'll be leaving to head to those places. So if any of you are there, hope to see you. And I'm, I'm doing gigs around Oregon and Washington next month, and British Columbia next month. So if anybody's out there on the West Coast and the Northwest who might be inclined to come to a show or organize a show, there's still time. And in January, I'll be heading to Ireland and New York City. And so, um, same goes for you guys in Ireland and New York City. Um, and then in um, April, I'll be in England, Scotland, and Wales, and very much interested in doing more gigs so far. Uh, got a you know a couple that are in the bag and more coming, but that loads of room for gigs in England, Scotland, and Wales in April and then in in May I'll be going to various parts of Europe, which looks to be very much uh, definitely including Denmark, Norway, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany, and Switzerland. So um, more on that will be on my website and on my email list and all that stuff um, as it materializes. But if anybody's listening from any of those places, I'd love to hear from you and. Um, Oh, for all of you wonderful people in the chat room, I can't uh, I can't scroll up, so I can't see older chats, and I've been behind on what's been happening in there. So, for uh, my apologies, but after I play this song, which is about the uh, s still sticking with 1996 and the trading with the Enemy Act that was passed against Cuba. And uh, we'll sign off after this song and hope to um, hope to see you guys uh, again soon. Um, when is my next show? Now it's it, it's like two weeks from to see two weeks from today, I believe. Um, that's all on on the show on the on my page for the show. Um, and uh, when is it? It's it's kind of random. It's always Sunday at eleven a.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, but it, it's not every Sunday, it varies. Uh, so, doing a seven part series, part three will be November 24th, um, and uh, and then part four, December 1st, and December 8th, and December 22nd, and December 29th will be the last one about 2013. And um, so, thanks for listening, whoever has been listening out there. And uh, here is Trading with the Enemy, um, and I think this is the version from uh, Living in These Times in 2001. Who can tell me, um, which country on earth has the most bicycle riders per capita and the most organic farms per capita? Cuba. 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 You win. Not to mention the highest living standard in Latin America. Screens in the windows. And they're the one, and screens in the windows. <laughs> Which is remarkable in a, in a, in a region where, where everybody else is getting malaria, the Cubans are not. For the simple innovation of having screens in the windows. I was there, and it's really um, a remarkable place, and how they can do so much with so little. Because importing everything, thanks to the U.S. embargo it, for Cuba, is about something like three times as expensive as it is for most of Latin America to import anything. And this is a small island nation that cannot possibly produce everything they need. And, um, and yet, in spite of this, they maintain the highest living standard of Latin America and the only country in all of the Americas, I guess with the conceivable possible exception of Canada, that um, actually has universal health care and universal education at the university level and a lot of other neat things that I won't go into. But this is a song... Um, Inspired by Jesse Helms. I saw her in the city center with a thermos full of coffee. 
Making the local brew on a street called Salvador Allende Gave her a peso and took a sip and sat beneath the palm tree It's so easy to be a criminal When you're treating with the enemy I sat down on a park bench beside a statue of John Lennon And to see the children dancing, it's so easy to imagine A world without borders, here so close to Miami As I smoke a cigar popular, once more trading with the enemy Biking down a country road, only one of many others the people call me compañero and they greet me as a brother One man has a basket full of mangoes, now I'm sure Jesse would agree With each bite I undermine my country by trading with the enemy Watch the oxen pull the carriage and the organic farms abound. All the fertilizer's gone, but there are other ways to feed the ground. Inspiring the world with the strength of creativity. See the past and future come together, trading with the enemy. And I just want to tell you that the enemy's so lovely Such a proud and beautiful people from the mountains to the sea From the clinics to the schoolyards, Che Guevara to Marti We have only our chains to lose by trading with the enemy Bye, everybody. Hope to see you in a couple of weeks. Keep on keeping on.